Traditional surgery cuts through the muscles, ligaments, and tendons, puts a joint replacement in. And after everything heals, it works very nicely. But you got a lot of scar tissue, and scar tissue never performs like the normal tissue does. And therefore, the joint never feels normal. With minimally invasive surgery, we don't cut the muscles, ligaments, or tendons. And that's a combination of the instruments which I've designed, but also the technique itself in moving the leg around in certain ways to do each individual step to minimize the tissue trauma during the surgery. So things recover more quickly, but also recover more fully. So as soon as we started doing minimally invasive surgery, you have to understand at the time the length of stay was about a week for a hip or knee replacement, is patients felt so good so quickly, they were up and walking the same day or the next day after surgery and felt great. And they said, well, why do I need to be in the hospital for a week? So we started letting them out, not in a week, but six days, then five days, then four days, and three days. And suddenly it became, they felt so good that we started letting patients go home truly the day of surgery, truly outpatient joint replacement. Now it required doing a lot of other things, changing the therapy, changing the anesthesia, getting really the everyone involved with the patient care, involved in making sure that patients felt good and could get out of the hospital quickly. And that's what started outpatient minimally invasive surgery. And the first case that I did for hip was about 18 years ago in 2001, and for a partial knee in 2002, and then a complete knee in 2003. And in fact, Judy Ryan was the first one we did for a knee replacement in 2003. So Judy refers to herself as a pioneer because she is. She's bright, she's articulate, she's energetic. She is the perfect patient. And so when I came to her and said, you know, we've been working with this and getting patients out of the hospital the next day very successful, would it be okay to try, if it was okay with you, to get you out of the hospital the same day? And if you weren't comfortable with that, we'd keep you overnight for sure. And she was very enthusiastic about it. And we did that case in the morning, one of the first cases, and she recovered a little bit for the next few hours. And lo and behold, by the end of the day, she was happy. She had very little pain. She could ambulate, do everything you want a patient to do. And we let her go home and she did great. And that's really started outpatient knee replacement. What really drove outpatient hip and knee replacement were the patients. Hospitals are wonderful places to be if you're sick. Rush Hospital, where I do most of my cases, is a fantastic place if you're sick. But it's not a place you'd want to be if you're healthy. Right? No one wants to be in the hospital. So we got to the point where we did the surgery so effectively, damaging almost nothing, that patients felt so good they could go home. And in fact, what we found is most patients wanted to go home. They would just cover faster and easier and just feel overall better to be with their loved ones rather than in a hospital. At this point, about 75% of my patients are going home the day of surgery. And that's their choice, not my choice. Most people want to go home. In fact, we've done so many, now we've just did our 10,000th outpatient joint replacement. We actually did a great study that we're just publishing where we looked at patients who stayed overnight versus patients who went home the same day. And we asked them a bunch of questions about how happy they were with the entire experience. And what we found was is that both patients were extremely happy, but the patients who went home the same day, who went back to their house, cared for by their loved ones instead of strangers, were happier and just had a more complete and a better experience. Well, that milestone of being the 10,000th outpatient knee blew me away. First of all, it tells me how experienced Dr. Berger is <laughs> that gives me a trust in the procedure, a total trust in the procedure, and um, that it's successful. It gives you no doubt when you hear that, that I'm gonna be walking in a few weeks, just like I did, teaching Pilates again in a few weeks, and having, having no issues whatsoever. Well, I think it's important to, for us to go to day surgery or outpatient surgery, because I think that, I really believe that the more we do for ourselves, as much as we can with our, within our limitations after surgery is we're gonna recover quicker. I've had surgeries before, the next day you do go back and it's the effort of getting in the car, uh, walking into the doctor's office, waiting in a waiting room, 
This way, the, doc the nurse comes to you, does your exam, you wait a few hours, and then the physical therapist comes. The home health uh, physical therapy was so awesome and positive, and probably within a week and a half, I had the full range of motion in my knee, and the lady had put me through the exercises and then measured my knee, and she said, you have already achieved complete flexion in the knee, what we want you to have usually at six weeks, um, and your extension's totally at zero. And I knew I'm, I'm done, I'm ready to go. And you had a good experience the first time, mm -hmm. and we came back just four months ago for the 10,000th yep. outpatient joint. And how was that experience? It was even better than the first one. Yeah. And, I, and I was wondering how that could be, but it was even better. It came, I thought, pit up really go as good as that first one, and it did. And it did, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And you're starting to get back doing most of the things you want to be doing now. Back, uh, and I know it's great right motion. Right wow. It's an great motion. Can I move around this one too now? Yeah. Good, fantastic. Wow. Even a little better on this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And their knees are nice and sta stable, and they're fantastic. I'm gonna get this one as well. That's good. And I can tell you've been you've been working. Bring your legs up for me. Good. Yes. About right here. So 90, think about 90 here yep. and 90 here. Okay. Now I want you to go and think about bent folding right at your bra, at the bottom of your bra. Yeah. It's called a stern fold. Okay. Yeah. And reach your fingertips across the ring. So okay? kind of like that's that. it. That's it. Good. Now reach your fingertips. And now you're going to pulse your hands like this. Breathe out. These are, this is when we're using these full coats, and these are actually low head center full coats. So they're different, they don't make these anymore, but they're for patients who have a really varus neck. She's got some back arthritis too. So these are her knees, you can see here. This is the one we did um, in 2003, and this is the one we just did a year ago. Almost identical, they look a little different because of the, the rotations involved. But otherwise, they look absolutely great. And uh, if you see, so this is her two hips.